Okay, gang, thanks so much for joining us today. We are uh, doing a 48days.net uh, interview. My name is Jen McDonough. I'm the 48 Days Connector, aka the Iron Jen. Uh, I absolutely have a hoot of a time getting to connect people over at the 48days.net site where we've got over 15,000 members. Uh, if you're not yet a member over at 48days.net, we encourage you to go over there. It is an application process. We do not want spammers in the community. So if you are not a spammer and looking to find your purpose and passion, we would love to have you on with us and before I introduce our guest I am going to uh, promote someone that I think all of you may know hey Dan Miller thanks for joining the call today <laughs> yeah, I, need, I need myself here hey thank you Jen yeah delighted to be here hey Scott hey Dan good to see you well we're just getting ready to introduce our guest today Scott BB Scott thanks for joining us Oh, thanks for having me. Happy post Monday after Easter. My goodness, already, Dan, you know, it's funny. You always talk at the end of every year about uh, goal setting, planning and all that. And usually around this time, I'll hear you say something to the effect of, uh, can you believe that the first quarter is almost over already? And uh, we're there. We're there. We're a couple of days away from April and I just cannot believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Another year, 2016. By and by, but great opportunity to take a take a fresh checkup of where we are. That's right. Yeah. Hey, Scott, you had written Dan a letter a couple of weeks ago, and Dan had asked, you know, for us to get you on the schedule to be interviewed because it was just fascinating. Now, you attended Coaching with Excellence. Was it last year? Uh, yes. So it was 2015, January 2015. That's right. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what was in that letter? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got to start back in October of 14 when I had heard Dan Miller on the podcast and Dan was promoting this, this coaching with excellence. It cost a thousand dollars. And I thought this guy's insane uh, for charging that kind of money. And then I saw, went and looked on his website and saw he had a, an upgraded package for $4,800. And I thought, my goodness, I'm going to throw up in my car just hearing that. How could somebody spend that? And so Dan was kind enough. I shot him an email at askdan 48days.com and he responded on the podcast and I was blown away that he had responded and I'll never forget one of the things he said he said and I can't remember if this is on the podcast or, or in person he said you know I would be horrified if you didn't get a 10 times return on an investment that you had made with me within a, I think it was three to six months and man that challenged me and uh, kind of questioned my manhood Dan I've never talked to you about that but uh, <laughs> questioned my manhood a little bit and ended up signing up and uh, so uh, came to coaching with excellence. Well, what I put in the note that I'd sent to Dan a few weeks ago was that was the end of January. And uh, I was uh, the executive director for non-governmental organization that worked in Nigeria. And I was really coming to coaching with excellence more to learn how to be a better coach internally uh, from an organizational standpoint. And, and we were in the midst of some turmoil going on with the organization. It was more internal. And it were, they were things, Jen, frankly, that I knew we were going to be able to kind of pull out of. I wasn't worried about them. Um, well, little did I know that literally a month later, February 27th of this past year, uh, I went to our, series, our, our fourth of a series of four emergency board meetings in, uh, in Texas. And I got on an American Airlines flight from Dallas-Fort Worth back here to the Savannah Airport. And for the first time in my life, I was 39 years old and I was unemployed. I'd been laid off because um, there were nine board members and the head of that board had fun, fundamentally kind of done a hostage takeover, if you will. It was, a, it was a, or a hostile takeover at least. And eight out of the nine board members resigned on the spot. And because my role was directly responsible to them, they felt it irresponsible if they maintained the role. And so they wanted to dissolve the role. And, uh, and so they were kind enough to give me a little soft landing pad, just enough not to completely bust my rear end when I fell. And, uh, and we took that and, uh, and we invested it. And God has been incredibly faithful over these last 12 months to help us build the business on purpose platform. And I'll tell you one of the things there were, there were, I, I could go into a list, Jen, is, and I'm sure you can as well from what the kind of the Danisms are, the Dan takeaways are when you're at a live event and uh, Jody, maybe I was just talking with him. And one of the things that he had mentioned, I asked him, I said, why did you go to coaching with excellence last month? And he said, I just wanted to meet Dan. <laughs> and so just the interaction 
of being able to be face to face. And, you know, Jen, the first time I met you, I heard Iron Jen, Iron Jen. I was like, what? I mean, are we like, do I have to rename myself if I come to Coaching with Excellence events? And you know what's so funny is to see everybody's unique personality and how you kind of brand yourself and, and what Dan's known for, what Ashley's known for, what Joanne's known for, what you, Jen, are known for. And you start to kind of be known for things. And uh, Aaron Walker and our mastermind, they laugh at me all the time because now I'm, I'm becoming known as the vision, mission, value, systems, process guy. And it's like the worst pickup line in the history of the world. Um, but that's who I am and I embrace it. And, and so we move on from there. <laughs> a little cumbersome just to have it roll off your tongue when you're meet somebody yeah. for the first time. Yeah, it would have not it, it not it would have not passed the coaching with excellence test for our elevator pitch. Well, in that, you know, as you know, we encourage people to identify a three-part sentence. I help blank, do no understand blank, so they can blank. Hmm. And I'm sure your your uh, statement there about you know vision certainly conforms to that as well. You've obviously put legs on that, how you do help people. So you came, got clear, decided how you were going to present this, offer this to people and got in the game. Hmm. And yeah. did you get your 10 times return? Uh, we've gotten now more than 10 times return. Um, I got almost a 10 times return last month uh, on that. And that is not to be braggadocious. Uh, Jen, what it is to is to do is really to do three things. Number one is to really glorify God for what he's done because it, it is beyond what my human capabilities were. I was a classic Seth Godin lizard brain guy. I lived in the lizard brain. Uh, it wasn't possible. And, uh, and, and what the 48 Days community has helped me to do is, is really bust that up, completely liberate that. And, um, and it's put flesh on the idea to kick that out. You know, Seth Godin's kind of an untouchable guy for me. I've never met him, never been in the same room with him. I've read all of his stuff. I've seen a lot of his stuff. I know that he's starting to integrate a little bit with Dave Ramsey and what they're starting to do now as well. But just being in the room with people who didn't believe that um, and who would kick that out, it was so refreshing, um, and which has led me to that mindset of being able to go, wait a second, you know, $5,000 a month or $6,000 a month, whatever the salary is, that, that's that's a self-imposed cap that I've lived under for a very, very long period of time. And so to surround myself with people who didn't think that way, it really is a glory to God. It's a gratefulness to you guys uh, for what you all have done. And uh, and it's probably an even more powerful uh, high five to my wife and my kids for putting up with it <laughs> for the wow. last 12 months. That's awesome. You know, one of the things that we talk about at Coaching with Excellence is the potential to move into extraordinary income. Mm. And it's not because we're materialistic, because we're releasing how we serve best. So mm. you describe coming from a nonprofit organization, an NGO, coming from that, certainly with a heart of ministry, a heart to help other people, and simply shaped what it is you were already doing, the way that you wanted to serve people well, and it opened up this amazing opportunity for you. So yeah, not only get a 10 times return, but a hundred times return as you described in your great little email. You know, when people are out there in traditional jobs, it's not uncommon to get a three or 4% increase annually. Mm -hmm. We're kind of used to that. It's like the old frog in the kettle kind of metaphor. Mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of change we can handle, but there are times when people come, get really clear on what they can do to serve effectively, and all of a sudden their income goes up three, four, five, six times hmm. what it was before. We have to prepare for that. If we aren't prepared for that, we can in fact sabotage that. There's what's hmm. called the upper limit challenge where people really aren't prepared mentally that level of success. How did you how did you so readily just open your arms to that, to this level of success that came so quickly? I mean, from a heart of ministry where sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to get our heads around that. Does God really want me to have this much success? Mm -hmm. Dan, I, I would say uh, if I could put it in two parts, the, the first part was busting up the initial concrete. And that's what I feel like Coaching with Excellence did. I feel like that's what the 48 Days podcast has done, the community, is it busted up the initial concrete or that ceiling. Maybe we should use that metaphor. And just tearing out the ceiling and going, hey, there's sunlight above the ceiling that you can start seeing. 
the second step for me was getting a, a part of a mastermind in, uh, in, in one of Aaron Walker's ISI masterminds. And so joining Aaron, I actually met Aaron the day before I met you for the first time, uh, found out about him, heard him through your podcast, invited him for coffee because I was going to be up in Nashville with you guys, invited him out for coffee and uh, told him, yeah, I'm in this great setup. You know, it's fine. I'm learning how to be a better coach and all that. And it was a month later that I shot him an email because he actually connected with me after that, sent him an email and said, hey, I just got laid off. And his message back to me was very simple uh, as Aaron, who is a classic D on the disc scale would do. And he'd say, God is in complete control. I'm out of town. I'll call you when I get back. And so <laughs> ended up uh, joining a mastermind. And Dan, those guys have been a sustaining force. You guys helped bust up the ceiling. Those guys have been a sustaining force to make sure that not only do I see through the ceiling, but now I'm above the ceiling. Um, and so I've got a new kind of ceiling that's above me. And, and it is. There's another ceiling above this one. And I'm now working on breaking through that ceiling. And trying to get through that. But there's something I want to highlight, Dan, that you mentioned coming from the nonprofit world. You know, out of, I, I was actually a seminary student. Once I graduated University of South Carolina, I studied theology at Southwestern Seminary for three years, graduated from there in 01. And while I was there, I was working in business selling reference materials by phone to CPAs and CFPs, which is where I got to hone a lot of that. But from 98 until today, 2016, so about 18 years, Half of my professional life has been in the nonprofit sector, either pastoring small churches, staff members at a large church, or uh, overseeing small nonprofits. And so, Dan, I was in this mindset of give your stuff away for free. Just give it away for free. Be kind, be courteous, give it away for free. Well, when I show up at Coaching with Excellence and all of a sudden I see Jen selling her stuff and I see Dan selling his stuff and Joanne selling his stuff... Dan, I see your granddaughter selling her stuff. <laughs> you know, th this, this mindset has infiltrated, and I finally started to understand, wait a second, when I give my stuff away for free, there's no perceived value with it. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And even the first few months into this, I was blessed by God with two great guys who both own businesses and who were very kind with me up front. For me to allow the, uh, for them to allow me to come in and say, "Hey guys, I'm going to give you a proposal. Will you please be honest with me as to the monetary value of what this is?" And they were so kind and gracious. They're still clients today, by the way, and I charge them every month. I just sent them an invoice last week uh, because I believe I bring that kind of value. Whereas before, I felt like the value came in just giving it away. So that's been a tough transition. Wow, that's a really important concept. Yeah, you know, sometimes. In our desire to help people, we hurt the very process of helping them best. And that often translates into they need to have skin in the game. If they don't, there's, you know, we're, we're, there's a real close connection in our culture between cost and perceived value. So if it's free, it probably isn't worth much. Hmm. Yeah, we help coaches position themselves for significant income, even if they don't need the money. It doesn't matter if they give it away at the end of the day, but it's still – helps the dynamic of the coaching process so everybody wins. That's a great way to view it. Yeah. You know, too, uh, guys, if you're listening in or you're calling in, we have the uh, question and answers open. So we want to make sure to get those answered before uh, we log off here today. So feel free to put those in the Q&A section. Scott, what would you say to someone who is looking at um, something like coaching with excellence or looking at beginning the coaching process. What are some of the fears that you had and what advice would you have for those walking into it? Well, I would say, Jen, it's a perfect question. I would say the number one is, is, the, is the monetary structure of it. If you're coming from an employee mindset environment, you're going to have a hard time with it. And you've got to make a decision up front that you're going to do something about it, both on the front and the back end. In fact, uh, before I came, I sent Ashley and Dan an email asking, how do I best need to get prepared for this weekend? And uh, they actually put me in touch with other people. That's one of the ways I got to meet Aaron Walker is I reached out to Aaron and reached out to a couple of the others and said, hey, what do I need to be doing? I think Stephanie O'Brien, actually, what do I need to be doing to get prepared for this great weekend? And so going into it, not just writing a check or sending a PayPal, but going into it uh, saying, no, this is, I want to get prepared for this so that I know I can come out on the back end thinking completely different. And that's the other question you've got to ask yourself. Are you willing to think totally differently uh, about 
how business works, how life works. You know, one of the things in right behind me, Jen, I was telling you this earlier, I've got a 200 year old live oak tree right behind me with Spanish moss. Well, what you can't see is what's below that. And that's an inlet tidal creek called the Chichesi River. And one of the reasons we're in this house is because of what you guys helped us bust through. And it, it, it's not that this house is overwhelmingly unaffordable. We can afford it. That's not the problem. It passed the Aaron Walker sniff test. W what's more important is I didn't feel like I deserved a place like this. Um, I, I just, I didn't. Well, we love to be here. I've got three and a half years left with my oldest daughter before she flies the coop and is gone. And we want to do everything that we can possibly do uh, to invest in them. So this Tidal Creek out here, to me, plays the perfect metaphor. If you're an employee, typically employees think like, you're on a boat on a lake. That lake may fluctuate a foot or two every month or so. But if you're a business owner, you're on a tidal creek. And right now, we're at high tide. Well, in six and a half hours, that tide's going to fall about eight feet. And so a business owner goes up and down and up and down. And the, the rip of the current is unpredictable, totally unpredictable. And so if you want to come with coaching with excellence, you need to start now integrating that mindset of the tidal creek, the business owner mind into your head versus the mind of the employee that just wants to kind of a stable environment that's never going to fluctuate. Great, great analogy, wouldn't you say, Dan? Yes, love it. Mm. Hey, Scott, why don't, um, before, we, before we forget, tell us where you're at in, in things. Um, give us a, your website if you could and kind of what you're doing today. Yeah, first place, I'm going to tell you geographically, I'm in the low country of South Carolina. If you've never been down here, we're the 12th fastest growing area in the country, we just found out last week, right off of Hilton Head. So that's where I'm at geographically. Uh, where I'm at virtually, uh, two places. Uh, number one, if you go to createafamilyvision.com, we are within weeks of the official launch of our uh, Create a Family Vision. Basically, we're going to teach you how to create a family vision. So the same thing we do for business owners. We need to do that for families as well. So you know the ultimate destination where you're trying to take your family. So that's the first thing. Uh, and we've got a special code, by the way, uh, for that. We can get to in a minute if you want, Jen. The second place is any small business owners listen. This is exclusive to small business owners. You can go to fourstepstobusinessfreedom.com. It's all spelled out, fourstepstobusinessfreedom.com. And you can see there how we kind of walk business owners uh, through the four steps, vision, mission, values, uh, three primary roadmaps, the organizational infrastructure, and then ultimately systematizing and processing your business. And then sometimes we have at the very top of that, I know we do today, uh, there is a 30-minute free coaching call that you can sign up for if you're a small business owner and if only you want to take action, you can you can take action right there. Oh, awesome. And Dan, I know uh, we've got your coaching with excellence coming up here pretty quick. If folks are interested in learning more about that, they can go over to 48days.com and look over in the live events. Otherwise, if we go to 48days.com slash clients, we have a great, uh, I believe it's a 10 tips to bringing in your first coaching client. Is that right, Dan? That's right. Your first paid coaching client. Yep. 48days.com yeah. slash clients. Yeah, and coaching and excellence is May 12th and 13th. And we've only got two more of the share, right? May. Yes, and that's right. Two that's more. Um, but I love, I love these stories like Scott, you know, to come in. It's funny. You've, you've referenced what an impact Aaron Walker has made. You know, Aaron's about a, a year ahead of you, perhaps in his own attendance here coming in with a lot of skepticism, you know, background in real estate and construction not really seen himself as a coach, but caught the vision. And he, as you know, has just skyrocketed mm. because he was a, such a perfect fit. Not that he had a specific academic background, preparation, or even life experience, didn't go to seminary like you, but just saw that you know people are drawn to his expertise, especially mm. in the business community. Mm -hmm. it, it's wonderful to see how this is the ripple effect here. There are people that you have now, Scott, as clients, who a year from now, you know, will be encouraged and bringing hope to others as well. Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a remarkable journey. And I, I really do for the, what do we have 18 people that are on the webinar? I mean, it, this is something that if you're questioning whether or not to invest, just invest, make the investment with the mindset that goes in with it. But I, I can't thank you guys enough. And it's not meant to just self applause here. That's not why you had me on, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
and just to thank you enough for what you guys not only have done, but you continue to do. Dan, the fact that you have not, I live in the world of retirees down here. And uh, I knew one guy two years ago, played 361 rounds of golf in one, one year. Um, <laughs> I thought, what an indictment on the human soul. And the fact that you have not decided to do that, but instead decide to keep, keep investing in people like us um, and, 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 and Jen and Ashley, everybody else, I'm just really grateful for that. Well, thanks. Golly. Yeah, that's, that's not a pretty picture to me to think about getting up in the morning, not having something specific to do, not having a purpose. As long as we're clear on that vision, like you help people identify, that's reason to get up in the morning. It gives us a lot of joy and fulfillment and brings hope and encouragement to a lot of others. Yeah. You, said you, you said you had a resource to share as well, Scott? Yeah, if, uh, if anybody's interested in, in embedding a vision story, it's different than a vision statement. It's, it's a lot more detailed. Uh, vision story, a mission statement, it's kind of a family motto, and a set of core values into their family. Just go over to creativefamilyvision.com. And uh, if you end up wanting to buy, it's an online course. If you end up wanting to buy, just type in 48 days in the code, and it'll drop that price down to 48 bucks for the entire course. It's a 10-episode course. And I literally walk you step by step through the hand. We use some fun stuff. We talk about unicorns and we've got uh, even a uh, caricature just to keep your kids engaged. But if you've got kids over the age of about eight or nine, usually those modules are pretty good for them. Mom and dad, of course, need to lead that. But kids under, mainly just the mom and dad will do that themselves. But it'll help you get real good clarity on exactly where you want your family to be. Yeah, it sounds like fun. I love that kind of process, especially one that engages the kids. We had a family mission statement. When our kids were growing up, it was on the refrigerator and the bathroom wall. You know, they can still reset it today. And I'm <laughs> sharing that with my grandkids now. So yeah. it's createafamilyvision.com and use 48 days as a code. And it's 48 bucks. What a great number. That's right. Yeah. Just so happened to be on your, what, a week after your 48th anniversary? That's crazy. I hope you did something <laughs> really magnificent. Uh, we had a party to end all parties. <laughs> it was It was epic, believe me. And really one of those lifetime highlights for Joanne and me. Yeah, we, we had a big party for our 48th wedding anniversary. Everybody celebrates 50, but we, 48 has been a, a great number for us, so we did it up big at 48. Well, you just have to double it at 50, I guess. There you go. <laughs> we'll probably do another big one at 96. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. i got no doubt to think you guys are going to be around, by the way. It's fast uh, kicking right now. No <laughs> doubt. That's great. Yep. Uh, well, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Again, uh, Scott had given you his info. If you're looking for the 10 tips to gaining your first coaching client, again, you can find that at 48days.com slash clients. Or if you're interested in attending our upcoming Coaching with Excellence event or Innovate uh, event here in 2016, head on over to 48days.com slash live events. Thanks, gang.